This video will document how to use SmartWorks Viva to log into Leica SmartNet services using the internal 3.5G modem found in some CS controllers. This document applies to SmartWorks Viva, SmartWorks Viva LT. So both the blue and the orange versions of SmartWorks are supported in this exact same tutorial. Since we have both LT and full, this applies to the iRover and the NetRover as well. In this case, we'll do this presentation using SmartWorks Viva LT. However, it is exactly the same, whether it's Viva or Viva LT. Before we start with the controllers, we need to make sure we have all the pieces we need. First, we need to be registered on the SmartNet North America site. Once you have registered and have an active account, you'll receive an email back for your activation. Here's a sample email about account activation. At the top, we have portal information, which explains how to log on to the SmartNet website. Here you can see information and look at your actual web usage. Below you'll have the SmartNet license information. Here you can see the actual licenses available to use in the SmartNet networks. Each one of the licenses will be named here as well as the password. These will be the NTRIP logins and passwords usable by on SmartNet networks. The service areas are outlined here, United States covering the entire SmartNet NAFTA group where each individual site could be their own individual servers. If you need information, please visit the SmartNet .leica-geosystems.us site. Here's the site that you can actually see. Now we'll move on to actually running the controllers. Now that we have our SmartNet connection, the next thing we need is a SIM card. Here's a SIM card, and we're going to insert this into a CS controller. In this case, it's CS10, but they're both exactly the same, CS10s and CS15s. We need to remove the cap on top. As soon as we remove the cap on top, there'll be a spot to insert it inside. So here you can see the CS controller with the cap removed, and this SIM card started to be inserted inside the top. Started, it lines up easy, and it's spring-loaded. So press down with it until it inserts all the way. Here you can see the SIM card completely inserted into the top of the CS controller. Once it's completely inserted, you can replace the cap, and we're ready to start SmartWorks. Now that we have all the information from SmartNet and a registration code, we're ready to start setting up our CS controller for use. We'll start by powering on our CS controller. If you still have the startup wizards available, you can either continue through to get to an RTK wizard or press escape. Here I'll press escape so I'm at the main menu. And I'm going to go to number three, instrument. And then number three, again, GPS settings, where I can get to the RTK rover wizard. Click RTK Rover Wizard and it starts creating a new profile for us to be able to store all of these settings we're about to put in. In this case, we want to create a new profile that we could load later if we needed to. So I have the radio box next to create a new profile highlighted and I'll press next. Here I need to enter a descriptive name that I will always remember this RTK profile by. Here I'll name it 3.5 NTRIP, meaning a 3.5G NTRIP connection to me. I'll press next. Here, this is an internet connection where we're going to receive stuff from an NTRIP caster. So I'll choose the internet option next to NTRIP and press next. Right now, I don't have a GS sensor attached to my simulator, so I'll just press next to complete this functionality without the sensor connected. The RTK device we're using now is my 3.5G internal modem. So I'll check the radio box next to internal modem. I do want to use my UMTS network if it is available. Press Next. For most systems in North America, we don't have pin and puck codes associated with our SIM cards. So here I can just press Next to leave these blank. In this case, we're not making a dial-up internet connection. We want to use the GPRS connectivity of our SIM card. So I'll make sure that the radio button on using GPRS is highlighted and press Next. The APN number will be provided by your provider. In most cases on AT&T, the APN will be ISP.singular. If you have a special APN or if you have a private account, you may have a different APN number. Here, enter your APN and press Next. 
The next section allows us to use static IPs or specific user ID and passwords for your cellular connection. In most cases, we don't have an ID for the internet connection and we won't be using static IP addresses. So we'll just press next with both boxes empty. Now we'll try to start the internet connection. Once we've completed our internet connection, we'll get a screen asking about our server that we'd like to use for our RTK corrections. In most cases, we've provided a list of all SmartNet servers inside controllers. So in that case, we can say edit a server and press next. This will allow us to pick the server from a list. In this case, I'll use the Colorado SmartNet server. At this point, we can see the NTRIP user ID and password if there's one available. We don't have it in yet, so when I hit next, you can see all the information about this server. Here I want to check my box saying use NTRIP, and I need to enter my information that came in the email. So here I've entered my login and password from the email I received earlier from SmartNet. Now I'm being asked to select my mount point from the source table. In this case, we'll want to pick it from what's available. So when I press next, it will go to the internet and check and pull the mount points available. In most cases with SmartNet, the first item on the list will be RTCM3 Max. We'll choose that one and press continue or next. Now for the RTK network details, we need to tell it that we want to receive RTK corrections for this network. The network type in most cases will be Max. If you're using something else, please provide it here. In order to receive a max correction, we need to send our position up to the server. So we need to check the box that says send GGA message. In this network, we're not using the GPU ID protocol, so don't use the send user ID. Press next. The RTK data format depends on the message that you chose. If you chose max, the name of our mount point will tell you what the actual message format is. In most cases, it will be RTCM version 3. However, if you're using something else, you have the option to choose it here. We will automatically detect the antenna and the sensor type at the base if you're using SmartNet. The one other option we want to choose here is to receive the RTK network information. When we check this box, you'll see additional information is available below. We want to turn this on so that it shows us and logs all the information. This way, if there's anything going on on SmartNet, you'll receive messages directly on your screen telling you what's happening. Press Next. The RTK corrections are not being received right now because I don't have a GS sensor, but I have all of these settings now ready to go. I simply press Finish, and we now have those RTK correction settings in there. Once you've completed the wizard, you can connect to the internet with your GS sensor connected. Here you can see I'm connected to my GS sensor by cable. In your case, it may be Bluetooth, but you can see we're connected completely. To start my data stream, I press the star button and then start RTK data stream. You'll see at the bottom that we're connected to our NTRIP caster. If you had a wrong login and password, you may not get that message. At this point, RTK corrections will start. And that concludes this video. Thank you for your time. For more information, please visit our website at www.lica-geosystems.com. For any questions or if you need any more assistance on this, please email us at survey.support at lycaus.com. And also, don't forget My World to register all of your equipment so that you can get features, downloads, and software updates as well as manuals for everything that you have.